What's going on people? Hope you're all well. Today we're going to be doing the final instalment of the P Company series. I'm going to be reacting to episode four of Mike Thorate's P Company documentary of the Parachute Regiment famous P Company week. So if you have enjoyed these videos and enjoyed the series as a whole, then please give it a like and possibly subscribe. It would help me out a lot. Without any further ado, let's get into the final episode. Let's go. So guys, if you have never been to my channel before and you're wondering who the hell I am, I used to be in the British Armed Forces and I did used to be part of the Airborne Forces. So I've got a little bit of experience with these tests and I'm going to give you a little bit of advice and guidance on these tests as we go through the video. So please stay tuned. Bit snowy. That's going to make this next challenge very difficult. Okay, so I've been quite fortunate. I've spent um, a number of years in this role. I started off in this job in 2000 um, as, as a SI sergeant. Uh, I then progressed in 2008, stroke nine, as a sergeant major, and I'm mm. now back as, as the OC. So I, I've seen quite a lot of uh, soldiers go through this test, whether it be parachute regiment soldiers or the wider air forces. Um, and I can actually say that the tests haven't changed in that period of time. The type of things that we look for. Yeah, it's quite crazy actually. The, the actual tests on Test Week have never changed really, I don't think. Um, as far as I'm aware, and, and from the history that I've looked back at, you, you've never seen any change in the actual tests. There probably is going to be difference is in the, the sort of beat up tests. So when you're going through either All Arms P Company or Depot, there's going to be obviously changes to that training aspect. Um, but in terms of the actual test week where you would have to pass the individual tests to become part of the Airborne Forces um, itself. Um, they've always been the same and I believe the timings and stuff have always been the same as well. So that's um, that's quite good. Four events, so on, on some of the more difficult events that we, that we uh, run, such as the log, we look for determination, we look for the people who can dig in, go through the pain barrier and move forward. We look for leaders, people who are encouraging each other when it gets hard. Other things such as, as, as the tabs and 10 miles endurance, you know, it, it, it's all always that little bit further, pushing people all the time. And what, what individuals don't realise while they've gone through tests is that this is the minimum standard for the parachute regiment and airborne forces. Everything gets longer, faster. That's a really good point out there, guys, because even when you're just joining the sort of um, the regular regiments in the army or the reg um, other battalions, um, when you do your tests at the assessment centre, they are the minimum standards. So when people are just scraping passes and stuff at these tests, that's the minimum standard. So it's going to be very difficult for you afterwards if you are just getting that minimum standard. So my, my advice to you is always try and push a little bit past that. So if you are someone that's going up to the assessment centre very, very soon um, and you're going to be doing your bleep test and things of that nature, um, then make sure that you are at least getting a level above the the standard that you require. So if you require 6.6, .6, you should be pushing for 7.6 or at least level eight or something like that. So when you do go down to your basic training, um, things are a little bit easier for you. The last thing you want to be worrying about when you're going through basic training is struggling on a certain run or a certain sort of exercise that you're going to be doing. So it's really important that you focus on your fitness when you are preparing yourself to go into the military. Now, if you are going on these on these sort of tests or P company tests, or you're going into the commandos or something like that, then obviously these are going to be very, very difficult to prepare for. Um, and that's why it's really important that the guys and girls that are going through these um, job roles make sure they are as fully prepared and committed as possible when, when going into training. Here we go. There's a lovely parachute just to just to start off the, the final episode. Uh, day four of P Company. Today's endurance march, 20 miles across undulating terrain. Uh, it represents like moving across the battlefield. Um, feeling refreshed after the weekend. Fortunately, it was gated in, so I couldn't go to the spa. That's pretty funny. I don't know if any of you guys remember, but on the last episode, they got told that they had the weekend off. Now, I was a bit um, sceptical, if that's the word, about them having the weekend off and being able to go out and do what they want to do um, as being people that are going through basic training, pretty much. Um, and they have been gated. And what that means in military terms is you're not allowed to leave the camp. You have to stay on the camp. They probably had the weekend off, but they weren't allowed to go out on the weekend and leave the, the front gates and go and do what they wanted to do, which is obviously stopping people from going out and drinking alcohol and things of that nature, which is obviously going to protect them in the future. Um, but it's interesting to see that they have been gated. Um, and it's obviously for their best interest, I believe, anyway. Um, let's get on with it. They're doing the 20 miler now. 
Um, and it seems that they are doing it in Catrick. Now, when I went and did the 20 miler and some other people that have probably done the 20 miler in the past, they would have done it up at a place called Otterburn, which is just um, sort of west of Newcastle area. Um, and it's a training area that's quite difficult, very undulating. So it's going up and down, up and down. Um, and I believe the reason they're doing it in Catrick instead of going to Otterburn is because of the snow. Now, the weather gets really, really bad in Otterburn. Um, and if it's been snowing, then it probably would have been too bad for them to go up there. Um, you do cross the um, the border into Scotland when you do the 20 miler in Otterburn, um, and it's quite a difficult route. So they're going to be doing it in Catrick, which is still going to be pretty difficult. Um, I never got the chance to do it there, like I said. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the route is like. And uh, yeah, ready to go. Right, the Joes are about to undertake the 20 mile loaded march uh, it's to just represent moving extended distance with weight on the back um, at reasonable speed, slower than the 10 miler clearly, um, but still uh, a reasonable effort. Um, this is to represent movement between the aerosol operations without the use of uh, vehicles and as airborne forces um, we usually deploy that reach without the availability of uh, transport and we'll be on the old uh, Mark 1 black taxis moving ourselves about, that's what this event's here to represent. The weather conditions deteriorated over the weekend and will make this next event especially challenging. The Endurance March is a squadded event conducted over 20 miles of demanding terrain. Each individual carries a Bergen weighing 35 pounds plus water and food and a weapon. The march must be completed in under four and a half hours to score maximum points. You can imagine that terrain to be quite slippy um, for anyone that has gone through any sort of training at Catwick and you've sort of tabbed across that um, that terrain. Um, it's quite rocky and stuff like that anyway. So with that snow on it, um, getting marched over, it's going to turn into sort of ice quite quickly, um, which is obviously going to make things even more difficult than just doing it on your normal sort of gravel terrain that you would do on, on a day-to-day -day basis. The only good thing is it'd be nice and cool, so you won't be too hot. We're on the endurance march, which is uh, one of our peak last tests. We've got um, got to do 20 miles, four and a half hours. Uh, no, I think we're about six miles in. That's all good. My legs are a bit sore, but the 20 mile is just a slog. Like in terms of sort of physical ability, um, it's not it's not really slow, but it's not at a pace where you're sort of out of breath the whole time. So, for example, the 10 miler, you, you're pretty out of breath on the first, especially the first couple of mile. Um, your feet are going quite quickly, but on this, it's more of a sort of just a slog. You just got to grind it out um, and try not to get too bored. Um, when I did it in Otterburn, we sort of the pack sort of spreads out because you go through sort of one man tracks quite a lot in Otterburn, um, and you're not really in a squad the whole time like these guys are here. Um, so you find that the pack spreads out quite a bit um, when you're doing it on the Otterburn terrain. But um, it seems that they're just staying in a pack throughout this one and um, moving as a body of men. Yeah, yeah, everything's going alright. We're just on the 20 mile endurance march right now. Yeah, I'm not sure at what point we are, but I guess around 7 miles in, something like that. So, uh, around 13 more to go. Yeah, so remember on one of the other episodes, they did the log race, um, and as part of the sort of pass criteria, you have to pass at least either the stretcher or the log race to end up passing the course um, at the end. Now, they've passed the 20 miler now. Um, the 20 miler is one of the easier ones, um, believe it or not. Um, not many people come off the 20 miler because, like I said before, it's very, very slow um, and you just got to grind it out. I hope there's a pass. I needed to pass today as I came off the 10 the other day, so I still, like, I still got an opportunity to pass the P Company now. 
Tomorrow we've got the stretch of race in the morning, the million in the afternoon. So as I passed along and, and came off the ten, I need this, I need this stretch of race to stand a chance now and get through a million. Muscles are sore, tight, and just the, from the miles on the feet, but it went well. Pretty much everyone passed it. Uh, tomorrow we've got the Ooh, some race, lovely sort of range stew they've got there. Stretch of race <laughs> simulates uh, getting the casualty to the HLS. Then after after that it would be a millen to test aggression and see whether we're suitable and have the mindset for the power to win. Just push to the flank to stay out there, wait for us. Happy with kids bomb forward with a stretch and no issues whatsoever. Just try and stay out of our last way. Them stretchers weigh a ton. Like a, a pr probably is about 100 kilo, I would say. Um, obviously, I'm just guessing. Um, but them stretchers are pretty, pretty heavy. Stretch race, more more stretch race, and then this afternoon we've got a million. Um, I personally think one of the most important events um, to simulate them extracting their casualty um, over about a five mile, mile route um, in, in teams. Um, that and the 10 mile I hold in uh, some of the highest esteem of all the events. So hopefully they do well today. Uh, we've got about nine that need to need to pull it out of the bag today, uh, having come off the log. But I'm feeling, feeling positive. Uh, they're lucked out in that the, the snow has melted, so it's not going to be like bad on ice. Quite a few of them came off the log race, so what we're looking for now is to essentially pull that behind them. They can't affect the past, they need to focus on what they can affect, which is the future. And like I've said many times before, this event needs no motivation whatsoever. You need to you need to get your oppo from one end of the battlefield to another in order to save his life. It's as simple as that. The stretcher race is conducted in teams of 16, carrying a 175 pound stretcher over a distance of five miles. No more than four individuals carry the stretcher at any given time. Students wear webbing and carry a weapon throughout. They must demonstrate grit, determination and leadership. So like I said there guys, there are teams of 16 on each stretcher. Within them teams, there is different teams of four. Um, and you'll be told to change and get on the log within your four as and when the staff want you to. Um, and it's quite fast paced. When you come off the stretcher, that's when things I found were a little bit more difficult because the stretcher then takes off and you're already knackered from being on the stretcher. So it's a very, very difficult event and it's no short distance. It's five miles. Um, it's not like the log race, which is only two miles. Um, you're doing nearly triple the distance and carrying a pretty heavy bit of kit. It's a painful event um, as that stretcher seems to bounce on the shoulder quite a lot no matter how much you can put in it bounces you just see there it doesn't it's not comfortable at all Doesn't look to me like the staff are telling them to change. Back when I did it, um, we had to stay in our teams of four within our team of 16, and we were told to change, and we had to be on that log when we were told to change, otherwise you were sort of struck off and stuff like that. So the recruits have just finished the uh, stretcher race, bit of a mixed performance. Now they've just got a final event, Millen, left to do. Hopefully they had enough uh, 
enough points to, to pass. Um, a few shockers come off, but a few people uh, strong. Some of the 17 year olds smashing out of the park. It's quite clear cut, black and white. Enough points, if they're good enough, they'll pass. If not, they won't. So final, final event now, uh, Millen. Crucially, it's about getting your head above, above the parapet and showing that. This is probably the most famous event on P Company, Millen. Um, I'm sure majority of people watching this video have seen it before. Um, it's basically boxing, um, but you're not allowed to dodge, you're not allowed to back away, you've just got to throw steroid punches at the face um, until you are told to stop. Controlled aggression, um, and that's all it is. Controlled aggression. The final event of Test Week is 60 seconds of controlled physical aggression against an opponent of similar height and weight. The DS are not testing Joe's ability to fight, but their ability to control themselves under pressure, think and maintain composure while staying focused on the task at hand, returning fire onto the target. A paratrooper needs to be able to deliver maximum violence on command, but equally be able to control themselves as the situation changes. Do not think for one second that just because you are a million means that you're going to pass. Some of you need maximum points. Some of you need to really pull out the bag here, so ensure that you give it your all. Yes? Yes! 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 yes. yes. There we go. So, how the points work on this one, guys, um, someone correct me if I'm incorrect with this here, but as far as I'm aware, you get 10 points um, if you win the fight, if you win the Millen, um, and you also get 10 points if he's both draw. Now, you only get less points if you lose, so it's best to win or draw, obviously, um, but if you lose, you get sort of less points than, than what you'd get if you got the other two. Um, so it's important that you at least draw or win, so you just got to keep on going. As long as you don't get absolutely pestled in the ground, most of the time they call a draw. Um, but if you get sort of battered, then you, you will lose, like, and then obviously that affects your overall score. So 60 seconds controlled aggression. Um, when we went down as a draw. Uh, next is Berry Parade, so I find out if I've done enough to pass. Nervous. Yeah. Really nervous. So biggest day of my life, I'd say. So like I spoke about in a couple of my videos in the past um, and talking about my pay company experience. I didn't actually get the opportunity to do Millen due to medical reasons. Apparently my eyesight wasn't good enough. Not sure how that affects it at all. Um, just wasn't allowed to do it, I had to sit out, um, didn't affect my score overall, so they just, they don't use that in account to sort of your overall points. I'm not sure how they do it, but um, it doesn't affect you being able to pass P Company at all, so if you are someone that isn't allowed to do um, milling due to eyesight reasons or whatever medical reasons, because some people just aren't allowed to, um, then it doesn't affect your opportunity to pass P Company or go into the Parachute Regiment or the Airborne Forces. So I just wanted to drop that in there for anyone that has been sort of disallowed from being able to box or anything in the past, um, you still be able to do this or at least be able to go into P Company and, and hopefully pass. On to the barrier parade now. Twice because there's uneven numbers to uh, get a bit more, uh, bit more bang for my buck, but yeah, it's good. No, it's just getting ready, got to go back, get changed, get ready for the barrier parade. Hopefully get some good news on the barrier, on the, uh, on the parade square. Nervous, obviously. I creamed in on the team, I managed to start on everything else. And like you don't know whether you've been knocked points for admin, so it's just a, it's anyone's game at the moment. I won my bout, it was more tired, I thought it was the longest 60 seconds of my life, to be honest with you. But uh, no, it was good. So the recruits have just conducted uh, Millen, yeah, which is uh, now the final event on uh, P Company. And now some people. This is one of the most brutal, brutal, <laughs> brutal sort of bits of P Company, yeah? You can go all the way through. Um, the test week and all the way through the beat up, all the way through parachute depot, um, and you can do all these events, mess up on say two of them, yeah, um, and you get to the final bit because you still have to take part in them. Say if you say if you did a couple of events and, and you you failed three of them, but. You
but you still you still have to continue with P Company Test Week, get to the end, and you still have to come to this parade, um, and you get told you fail, and you have to march off, and then if you are part of the attached arms and you do sort of all arms P Company, you have to go all the way back to the nine weeks of the the P Company beat up. So you have to do pre para in your regiment or your or your squadron, and you have to do um, b- uh, brigade pre para as well. So you have to do a full nine weeks again and do all of this all over just to just to get back to try and give it a go again and try and pass again now like he said there if you are going through parachute depot you only get two chances at doing this so you might get back squatted a few more weeks and then you get the opportunity to go through it again and um, i'm not sure exactly how they do it but it's pretty brutal it's pretty brutal performances yeah it's one of the, the best events for us as a training team to be able to look at joe and see how they react under pressure in a fairly uncomfortable situation a situation a lot of them have never found themselves in before um, I think it was quite a good knowing and we saw a lot of good uh, performances there. You have a pretty good idea as well guys, if you are someone that is being able to stay on every single event then you're going to pass, no matter how sort of bad you do, if you know what I mean. So say if you were doing the log race and you got two chalks on your head and you did this, um, the stretcher race, you got two chalks on your head, um, but you stayed on everything, um, you will pass pretty much. But if you've came off a couple of events, then at this moment in time, you will be sort of flapping a little bit and be starting to get a little bit worried if you have passed or not. And then when you finally get that pass, there's no better feeling than it um, at all. Uh, You stand there, held head high, and you get your maroon bearer. Test week is over, and Joe marches out onto the parade square to be told whether they have passed or failed. Those that have not made the standard turn to their right and march to the rear of the parade. Those that have failed their second attempt will move to another infantry unit and will not serve in the parade. Number five. Sir. Pass. Number 20. Sir. Pass. Sir. Number 21. Sir. Failed. Sir. 22. Sir. Pass. Sir. 23. Sir. So guys, that is the end of the P Company Test Week series. I just want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it a little bit useful, maybe a little bit entertaining. Um, And if you want to go and actually watch the original videos, then I will link Mike Thwaites' channel down below. Really good cinematography, really good documentary to watch. You can watch it as one big video as well. I think it's about an hour long, so you can watch it all back to back to back um, without having to skip through and all that sort of stuff. So if that's something you're really interested in, the link will be down below. What is going on for us next? We're going to look at another series that we can get involved in. I might try and do one based around the Royal Marines. Don't have as much experience with that, but I can definitely throw my 50 pence in and give you guys a little bit of advice. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Hope you all enjoyed it. Catch you in the next one.